Welcome to Tech Tuesday by Woody, a weekly series where I explain technical stuff to regular people. Today's video is going to be on why YouTube and Netflix buffer. Here we go. So keep watching because the stuff for advanced listeners is coming soon, but I wouldn't be doing this right if I didn't cover the basics. Stuff like, is your computer too slow? If it's more than four or five years old and it's a desktop, it's too slow. If it's more than three years old or so and it's a notebook, there's a good chance that it's too slow to play HD video well. The next thing is, maybe you just don't have a fast enough internet connection. If your download speed is less than about 5 megabits per second, then Netflix can't stream in HD to you. And you have to have a little more than that for it to cover it. If it's less than 8 megabits per second, then YouTube can't stream 1080p videos to you. There's still 720p and 480p, but those are the things that you're supposed to have covered. You're supposed to have a fast enough computer, and you're supposed to have good enough download speed to watch these things. If you're doing that and you're still not getting the service that you expect, you're still not getting nice high definition videos uh, without tons of buffering and waiting, I'll explain why. There is a good chance that your local ISP, Comcast, Time Warner, Verizon, etc., actually want to suck. And I'll circle back around to that, but first I want to explain how the internet works. Big topic. Your last mile provider, the sorts of people I mentioned, Time Warner, Comcast, etc., Verizon, they connect to your house, and while you might think that they provide you internet, and they do, they really just solve that last mile problem. And then they connect up with what are called tier one internet service providers. People like level three, NTT, etc. Where that tier one provider connects to your local ISP, your Verizon, your Time Warner, etc., can be a bottleneck. And that bottleneck causes problems and is probably the reason that you're not getting the download speed for some services that you expect to get. If bottleneck is a term you hadn't heard before, it refers to the thing that slows down the flow. And we've got this cool little bottleneck demonstration going on here. If it wasn't for that narrow part in the middle, then the water would easily flow from one bottle to the other. But because of that narrow part in the middle, that's what slows everything down. And that's what happens to your internet connection too. Okay, back here in tech land. If you have YouTube on one side of the country and you're on the other and you're trying to transport data across, it's that tier one provider that's doing the bulk of the data transport. And I know there's data centers all over the place for Google, but work with me here. What can happen is this. At that point where the level three connection matches up with the Verizon connection and traffic grows as traffic on the internet tends to do higher quality video, more sites, more traffic, people use it more often. Then one side upgrades and the other side upgrades, one side upgrades and the other side upgrades. And the local ISPs, the people who provide that last mile often have conflicting emotions about whether or not they should be upgrading your connection to level three or throttling some of the things that take the most traffic. Netflix and YouTube account for nearly half of, I don't know if it's North America or global internet traffic. It's that video service that's taking all the bandwidth around the world. So the question is, why would these local internet service providers actually want to suck? The answer is, all those people that sign up for their free month of Netflix, netflix.com slash Woody, all those people that are watching YouTube, all those people that are watching Hulu, they're not watching TV anymore. The local ISPs tend to be people who provide old school television and they're losing their customers to these people. Therefore, they're not encouraged to make their internet experience, netflix.com slash Woody, YouTube, etc., the best that it can be. So, Woody, predict the future. What's going to happen here? Is it going to continue to get worse, or is this thing actually going to get better? It's going to get better. I'll explain. So, the prevailing prediction is that companies like Time Warner, Comcast, Verizon, etc., that are currently in the business of streaming movies but only to their own customers, are going to step up their game and try to provide streaming services to people who aren't their current customers. So, maybe I get my internet connection from Verizon, but Time Warner has the series of movies or TV shows or whatever that I would like to download and stream. If that's the case, then they need to have a peering agreement. Maybe Comcast has what I really want and I'm a Time Warner customer. At some point, 
when all these other people who are in the business of providing old school television start getting into the business of providing new services like Netflix, then you're going to find that they need to step up their game in terms of peering agreements. And when they step up their game in terms of peering agreements, everybody's internet connection will get better because it's in their mutual interest to provide good service. Be sure to like this video. I always appreciate it when you do. Subscribe in the top right corner if you're new around here. And on the left is my playlist of Tech Tuesday videos. So if you liked this one, then you'll probably like those too. Have a good day. Uh -huh.